we have a <laughs> we say you go by what Lulu or Lulu. That's it. <laughs> Alton, great job. Show him that Thank belt. Thank you. Yeah, this is the this is the belt. So we got to keep this baby. We just. So, and this is an all-action fight, so t tell our audience a little bit of, uh, about your performance in that ring tonight. Yeah, well, tonight, you know, I've had, I've had a minute out of the ring, so I had a little bit of ring rust, but I felt like I was uh, landing a lot more punches and that the, the score was uh, probably not as close as what it was. Um, I, I slipped on my feet in the six, but got up like a true champion and pressed the action and continued like a true warrior, so... And when you slipped, you were talking about, you know what, tell, no, tell us what was going you know, through your mind. The canvas must have been wet or something, you know what I mean? I do. Um, no, I was chilled, I was good. I was just staying calm and uh, waiting to get back up, sir. And tell me what's next for you. What's next? Um, in the ring, I'll hopefully get that fight with Fabiana and be back here with the PBC. That's, that's what's, what we hope will be next. So after a nice, relaxing time with my children, so I'm going to go spend some time with them back out in Perth. In well, Australia. Correct? Yes, of Australia. course. Australia, that's yeah. a long way. Yeah, did you get to talk to them my, yes, after the fight? Yeah, they did. They sent me messages. They were watching it live. And um, it's my daughter's birthday tomorrow, so I get to bring home the bell for her for her birthday again. So I did it last year. We did it again this year. So, so I'm always curious what brought you as a woman, a female, into, into the the fight game. Boxing. You know what? I think boxing actually really, truly found me. Um, you know, I used to skateboard, like I said, and I was always felt like I've been an athlete. And I feel like for so many years in between, I felt like something was missing of me. And then when I got into a gym, I was like, I found it. It's my second shot to be a professional athlete again and um, really push myself and have the, you know, the maturity of an adult to be able to do that. Well, congratulations. You have a great personality, a Thank positive, so energetic <laughs> fighter. No, you great. know what? It, it, it was the fight of the night. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> say that. A lot of people say that when I do fight all the time. But it's been really great being here in New York and in Brooklyn. And I've absolutely loved every experience of it. So thanks for embracing me. And thank you, yes, and, and welcome back. We'll, we want to see you back here Yeah, in you got to see me back. That's <laughs> it, baby. <laughs> thank you. Is in the process, a unanimous decision of victory over Lorraine via Yobas in their rematch. She won across the board 95 to 94. Please welcome from Australia, still the champion, Louisa Houghton, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for the champion who looked tremendous. She's an exciting fighter. She threw a lot of punches. She got up off the canvas having suffered a knockdown, but she came out, closed the show, and we will give her the podium if you have any questions. Louisa? Brooklyn, we go hard. Yeah, I told you guys I was uh, rock your socks off, so I hope I entertained you all. Um, I had a little bit of ring rust in there, but, you know, I felt like I was pressing the action and landing more, more punches and... The sixth round, I uh, had a bit of a slip, but, you know, I got up like a true champion and uh, pressed, pressed on and pushed forward, and we came out victorious like a warrior. Um, I would just like to thank the PBC, thank uh, Al Heyman and Louis de Cubis Jr., and, uh, of course, my man Elvis Grant for everything that he's done this year. It's been a big year for us, and, you know, we've had a minute out of the ring, so I'm grateful to be here and back and be presenting women's boxing to the PBC. So thank you guys all for having me, uh, Tom Brown and uh, Kelly also. I really appreciate everybody, Thorson, and everyone that's done all the hard work behind the scenes. So to you guys. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> No, it was good. It was just a bit of a quick shot. Um, you know, Elvis has always told me just to stay calm and stay down and then, uh, you know, don't jump up straight away. So I was just listening to him from the corner and we were good. Louisa, when you get dropped, most fighters we see sometimes panic, they start worrying. How do you keep your composure through those rest of the rounds and not worry about crap? How you get down a <laughs> round, down a few rounds, you know, you're just pressing the action and cut hold the shot. I think, you know, you just get up like a true champion and continue to focus on what you're doing. Um, like I said, I always had Elvis, like, if you ever get dropped, you know, just stay down, stay relaxed, look at me and, you know, get back up. 
before, you know, and just continue. But I feel like it pushed me to push the pressure even more and um, land some more heavier shots to the body, which were landing as while she was holding me, so. Congratulations on a victory. Um, hi. Um, <laughs> you know, this is a, you know, it's, it's great for, you know, boxing in your, you know, part of the world, in the Australasia area, you know, that you're representing them in the way that you are. Uh -huh. um, what legacy... Do you know, were you looking to leave um, for, you know, the Australasia region where, you know, boxing is really on the rise on a world scene? Yeah, boxing is definitely on the rise, especially for the women. Um, I represent my country, Australia, and I'm very grateful to be here and be representing them on this level. Um, it's very challenging to come all the way from Perth, which is, you know, 11,000 miles away, be away from my children and be able to represent this sport and also the women and my country. So I feel very... Uh, Grateful to be here and blessed by God. Luis, I got ask a question. I mean, everybody asks the female fighters, is mixed martial arts we part of? We see that women's boxing still is behind the peg, behind the TV ratings. Have you thought about doing that? Doing both? Doing MMA and boxing just so you can get more money in your pocket, more, you know, more, device, more TV options? Yeah, I understand. You know, there's a lot of fighters doing that as well, so they can can create uh, more fights and things like that. But for me, I love boxing. Um, I don't know. I'm just so drawn to it. I, I'd rather just stay focused on the one. I've only been boxing for a short time, just a little over five years, so I've accomplished a lot in that time. Um, you know, I, th I really believe that women's boxing is uh, really on the rise and they're starting to pick up. You know, there's a lot of great women out there fighting and showcasing and putting on fights of the nights and you know we always steal the show um, because people are very excited to see something different and we're an attraction to such a big card because you know they put on a lot of great guys and then they slip in an, a, a good female fight in there and it, it's an attraction and people are attracted to watching it and we always bring a lot of energy so would you be in favor of women in at least title fights going to 12 rounds because it was a great fight but it seems like you know it should be championship rounds, like 11 and 12. Would you be in favor of women's title fights moving to 12 rounds? You know what? I'm, I'm in favor for whatever's going. For whatever it needs to be, I've just got to do what i got to do. So to me, it doesn't really make much difference. Um, you know, if everybody wanted it, then that's what it would be. Just like the two, three-minute rounds. It's the same thing. I think this time she came harder to fight, but like I said, I had a year off as well. So finding that distance and getting back in the ring uh, with a few challenges throughout the year has probably played a big part of it. But she definitely came more prepared, I believe. Yep. What did Elvis say to you when you were you know, getting ready to get back up? What was he saying to me? I don't actually... I just what he was saying to me in my head because he already prepped me for this all the time. We we go through so many things in the ring that he says, you know what, you're fighting at this level. If you ever get dropped, which you probably will one day because you're a boxer, just stay down, don't jump up, and just keep calm, and then get back up. And that's what I did. And then we uh, carried on like warrior. <laughs> Luisa, final question here for me. How much pressure do you put on yourself? Because as you said, you, you're representing your country. You're representing women. You're representing women's boxing, which has for years been sort of in the shadows. How much mm -hmm. pressure do you put on yourself to have not just a win, but a great fight, great performance every night so that the people behind you get a better chance, so that the women behind you can you know, get a step up, get more pace, so that you can make it easier for those coming right behind you. Yeah, I definitely do put a lot of pressure on myself. I think anybody at that elite level that wants to continue to rise and to continue to grow will always put a lot of pressure on themselves. I think that we can be our worst enemies sometimes, wanting to do better and better all the time. But it's definitely, you know, when you have have that place to be able to create that change, then you're always wanting to do better. So that pressure is always going to be there. It's just how you handle it. Yeah, I would love to fight uh, Fabiana Butigi, um, who's the champion at this weight. 
Um, I'd love that fight. And then I'd love to go up to 105 and uh, take on the WBC champion there. Uh, I think her name's Teeny Tina, Tiny Tina, or something like that. And, you know, um, there's also some other great fights at 108, Sinisa Estrada, who just fought Marlena Spaza. You know, these are all fantastic fights. You know, I'm not just here to stay at 102 because I've won the world championship at 108 pounds as well. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of fights there, and I'm excited to have them all. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you all. <laughs>
like a father figure, um, someone I really look up to uh, through his experiences in life. He's taught me so much, you know, not just, you know, through boxing, but I call him about anything and every little thing. Like Ronnie, uh, how you get how you get your bills paid on time? Like <laughs> put it on auto pay. You know, he just say stuff like that to me. Like he's a real father figure to me, and he uh, keeps me grounded and things that I need that I can't get from an actual trainer. Ronnie gives to me. All right, now we'll open it up to the media for questions. I believe we have the microphone on, so wait, your turn. Jamal, if you uh, can't get the fights that you really want, Canelo and Triple G, what are your thoughts on possibly fighting Danny Jacobs next year in a fight here in Brooklyn, which would be big? I mean, you know, I'm not a matchmaker, but, like, I want the most explosive fights. Um, I want to put myself to the test and uh, challenge myself with the biggest competitions out there, you know, um, that fit that fits me at the right time, and you know it's all about timing. So, you know, as long as the money right, the timing right, you know, we could turn into a prize fight overnight. Questions for the champion. Well, as we wait for questions, Jamal, I'm going to ask you. Tell us about that. I might as well ask you questions. <laughs> tell us about that that left hook that you had to put away Hogan. I mean, my goodness, it was a vicious left hook landed right on the button. You know, I was. I had a couple of different game plans um, coming into the fight. If he if he decided to fight me, then I would box him. If he decided to box me, then you know I would slug with him or whatnot. I really just wanted to have fun this fight, and that's what I did. Um, I thought about it early. I thought about doing it a little bit earlier, like turning on the gas and going get him. But then you know I want to you know do my thing this fight. This fight was all about me. Um, Dennis Hogan showed great heart stepping up to me and trying to fight me, and he, he was a little slippery and a little tricky, but, I, you know, I figured him out. Like, you know, he did exactly what leprechauns do, and that's exactly <laughs> what I thought. Like, you know. So I figured him out, you know. He got, he, got, he got his issue tonight, and that was it, you know. Um, moving on, 30, I told you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Champ, right here. Did, did, when, you, when he was doing all the stuff, that posture, do you think that was Frank Barato in the first like two or three rounds? Like you caught him with that left the first time, and he said like he popped up like I'm not hurt, but you kind of like laughed him off. Yeah, that was like the fourth round, you know, like we, we you know, setting him up, you know, uh, getting closer to him with the jab. He had a little awkward movement, you know, like when when I mean awkward, it wasn't nothing I wasn't used to, but it was just his movement was not like you know, like normal, you know. It, he 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 was trying to he he had like a survival tactics from the beginning, and um, I could have just stepped back and did my, what I had to do and you know land a shot, but I wanted it to be precise and I got him out there with the left hook. It was something I always you know I love my left hook, so I'm glad I got a chance to land it on him. Would you fight uh, Devinchenko, the cat that really beat Triple G? I hey mean, I'll fight anybody, dude. I'm a boxer, man. I, I fight for a living, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not scared of nobody. You know what I mean? I got the WBC belt. You know, I, I earned this belt. I, you know, they could have said they gave it to me or whatever. I put myself in position to get this belt. I moved up from junior, junior middle just like the dude that just moved up to fight me. So, like, you know what I mean? It is what it is. Like, don't, don't let the politics and the network and all that stuff fool you, man. I'm here to fight. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jamal. I know the target is uh, Canelo Alvarez, but if you can't land Canelo Alvarez, what's the uh, the possibility of you landing or getting or uh, seeing a Demetrius Andre fight? You know, like like I just said, the last question, like I'm here to fight whoever. I will fight Demetrius Andre any given day. You know what I mean? If if that's what it takes to get to the next like level, you know, I want to fight the biggest and the baddest out there. You know. Shit, I fight Saudi Arabia too, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you see what they doing out there, like, this shit fun, you know, this boxing, this is part of, this is only a little bit part of my life. But, and of course I want to expand it and, and challenge myself to be the best I can be. So that's just, that's just something I'm into. I'm into challenging myself and making, you know, the best fights out there. But I'm taking the fights as they come, you know, I'm, I'm one of those, uh, um, I like to look at myself as like, damn, I'm in a position like Terrence Crawford, like, you know what I mean? One of the best in the world, top guys. He just got to get the fights that he can get and, and keep it going. We feed our family like this. So don't y'all y'all looking at it differently than I am. Now one more thing, your brother have a huge fight coming up in a couple of weeks. What uh, advice would you give him? 
beat his ass. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what the hell? Hey, bro, go do your thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't train my brother or not, but like, this is what we do. We feed off each other. Um, shoot, I set the tone. You know, it's, next couple of weeks, y'all gonna see Charlo, Charlo, Charlo all over the network. Y'all, you gonna start seeing people say, uh, oh, man, I'm tired of these Charlo brothers, this and that, this and that. Yeah, we like that. That's what we like to hear. That's when we know y'all tuned in. Jamal, Jamal, can you take us, uh, can you explain like what went to the, you know, landing that left uppercut? I think it was the uh, third round possibly? Uh, it okay. was in the fourth round. I got okay. chewed out by my coach. Um, he told me from the beginning, like, hey, it's right there. Ronnie, like, you know, I'm like, all right, Ronnie, damn, my bad. Like, <laughs> hey, all right, I got you. All right, I'm going to throw it. I'm going to throw it. You know, I just went out through it. Like, I, I, you know, this is something we've been working on all the way in, in the gym for months. Um, we, j we wanted to just sharpen up. I mean, I saw the shot there. Yeah. But. It's just about timing, you know. Timing is everything. Were you surprised that he got up? I mean, the shot landed. So nah, I was. So I was ready to fight twelve rounds. If that's you know, like I was ready. You see, you, you go back and look at the replay. I'm like, go get him. You know what, <laughs> what I mean? Like, shoot. You know, I'm the one of the best finishers in boxing. That's why I took him out in the six. Hey Jamal, um, throughout the week, uh, I noticed um, a couple of different things about your demeanor. Normally, you have this very aggressive approach, but I noticed a lot of calmness throughout this week. Um, I saw that also translate a little bit in your fighting, and there was a lot of patience. But then there was times where you were very aggressive, like at the weigh-in, and also you turned up in the fight. Is something that kind of happened throughout your life that kind of yeah, sparked that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm trying to take a better approach about it. You know, um, like the fire lit, you know, you'll see it when you see it. Like, it's always like this. The, um, Weigh-ins, you know, fighters talk this and talk that, and media say this and say that. You got a dude on my undercard, you know what I mean? Like, you're on my undercard, dude. You know what I mean? Shut your mouth or you'll never get a chance. You know what I mean? I got I got power to do what I want to do. Um, I got the belt sitting right here. Like, you know what I mean? If you want this belt, you better shut your mouth and, and or you ain't going to never get the opportunity. You know what I mean? Respect is respect and you got to you gotta earn it. Um, you know, look. It is what it is, man. The dude, you know, you get the run of your mouth saying things you don't, you don't mean. And then you got to live up to it. And that's exactly what happened at Dennis Hogan tonight. Y'all can go through his, his Instagram and his social media and shit. You see him doing the coming to America with the lion on his shoulder and shit. The shit was funny to me, too. You know what I mean? But I'm like, hey, you going to have to live up to that. You know what I mean? I put that line. I made that line do a whole cartwheel, right? You know what I mean? Get up out of here. Stop playing with me. <laughs> you dig? <laughs> Hell yeah! I take everything personal. You, you don't you don't put out shit like that and not mean it. Like you gotta mean that when you when you're talking about me. Use my name the right way. You know what I mean? Hey, Jamal, Especially if you finna fight me, you gotta live up to that when we fight. Jamal, you mentioned um, you know your advice for your brother. I'm back here, man. Your your advice for your brother was uh you know to go out and, and whoop this guy's ass, Tony Harrison. Um, a week or two from now, but I mean, how, like, come tomorrow, is that the first thing on your mind, like, getting back to, to, to your brother, getting back to his camp, and doing whatever it is you can do as a brother to, uh, to make sure he gets his strap back? How yes, I will fully support my brother um, in the comeback for his uh, world title. Um, it means the most to me to, for my brother to, you know, uh, be going through what he's going through to go get his title back. That's just something that's, I mean, that's natural. Y'all asking me to, like, am I going to support my brother? Hell yeah. I'm going to support my brother. I got friends from Detroit, too. I, I got fans from Detroit, you know, family that they moved up there, whatever. It don't matter. That's my brother. That's my twin brother. He deserved, he, he really didn't lose his belt in my eye. Hey, I told him, look, suck that shit up. Let's go. We got we to gotta fight. We got to go get this belt back. What would you tell your brother? Go, hey, we going to fight, right? And ask your question. Well, he, he mentioned something about a, an incident in a hotel room, too, like between you and Tony Harrison. Is there, is there anything true to any truth to that? Hell no, nah, hotel room. What the hell are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about, dude? You tripping. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you tweaking, yeah. nah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> nah, you on some other shit. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, next question for uh, the champion. Jamal. <laughs> Let's move along. Uh, two more. All right, Jamal, right here. Uh, we talk, we spoke with Demetri Andre in his camp. They'll do a unification fight. 
Who said what? Demetrius Andre. We talked to his camp. He said they'll do the unification. They also as well said, we want drug testing. You've heard those before. Bro, I've been drug tests all I'm, week. I'm, I'm straight. I know, Look, I'm, I'll do any drug test. What you think? I'm, I'm naturally. I'm, I'm, let me. Uh, it was Jackson right there. Look, that's my strength and conditioning trainer, uh, nutritionist. Shit, he made sure I'm on weight. Everything was solid, right? Let me ask you this. With all the hatred you and Andre have had, is there a part of you that just wants to look at him and go, I'm not giving you a title shot. All the new endos, all the crap you did years, is there a part of you that wants to look at Andre and go, screw you, I'll never fight you? He just said he fight anybody. Yeah, man, I'm a boxer, bro. I fight for my life. Every time I get in that ring, every punch that's coming at me, you look in my eyes, I'm looking at those punches like, nah. Nah, this, that punch not going to do it. That that ain't going to do it either. You know what I mean? Look, Demetrius Andre, I like his campaign. Great fighter. You know, now he's chasing. You know what I mean? He got a chance to fight my twin brother and didn't get it. Get that he, he canceled the opportunity. That was back in the game. Like, look, he's on another. He's hiding behind a network right now. I'm not. I'm Lions Only. Promotions. It's all over the ring. Come on, man. Ain't Look, I, we not going nowhere. We not scared of nobody. This is what we do, bro. We fight, bro. We fight for a living. This is what I do to feed my family, man. You think I'm, when you saying, like, not going to fight somebody, not, man, if he want to fight, we gonna, he going to make the fight happen. You know what I mean? A side, B side, C side, I don't give a fuck about none of that. We're going to make the fight happen. If Demetri Andre want to fight, he can, get the, he can get that work too. He know how to get over here. Just like he went over there to the zone, he know how to get his ass back over here. Last question, right? We got one more question. Last question, Sum up your 2019 and what do you want if you can strip your 2020? Sum up 2019. Shoot, we went in and got the Brandon Adams fight out the way. Um, yeah. 2-0. and One knockout throughout the year. Retain the world title. Great year, 2020. We just going to do more. You know what I mean? We're going to we gonna, we gonna stay on their ass. Like this is what we do, man. We, whoever I get in the ring with, I'm there to I'm there to fight for my life. And that's what I do. Thank Congratulations you. to the champion. Happy holidays to him and his entire family. Jamal Charlo, victorious tonight over Dennis Ogan in the seventh round. An excellent performance out of the champion. Thank you so much for joining us on the stream. Thank you, Brooklyn. Thank you, Barclay Center. Thank you, Showtime. We will see you soon. Have a happy holiday season. Thank you. And I'm Crystal Hart reporting from the Barclays Center. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the fights.